Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you all for joining uh, for His Holiness Chandramali Swami Maharaj's daily call. Uh, today, um, Maharaj is going to continue on the topic of glories of Karthik uh, since yesterday we started. Um, thank you, um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for joining and giving your valuable association to us. For, uh, for all of us today. Um, you can please take over, Kumaraj. I will just share my screen. Yeah, this is chapter 9 of 10th Canto. Any uh, particular verse you want to go, Kumaraj? Like, uh... Okay. I'll just make it as advanced view so that it is easy to. Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And so we're in the ninth chapter of the tenth canto delineates in a very complete way in the entire pastime of Krishna uh, and his Dhamma mood and steals fire, gets tied up by his mother, knocks over the uh, broom tree and uh, performs all kinds of activities just to give pleasure to his devotees and to himself. <laughs> Krishna, when Krishna does something, he gives pleasure to himself also. <laughs> we're like that too. If we want to do something that gives pleasure to ourselves, where does it come from? It comes from Krishna. Sri Sukhuvacham Ekkada Grihe Dasi Suhu Yasoda Nanda Gehini Karmantara Nitasu Nirmamanta Swayam Dadi Tani Aniha Gitani Tadbala Charitani Cha Dahi Nirmantane Kale Maranti Tanyaga Dayata Dayata Translation Srila Sukadeva Goswami Continue. One day, when Mother Yasoda saw that all the maid servants were engaged in other household affairs, she began to churn yogurt. Now, churning, she remembered the childless activities of Krishna. In her own way, she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself about all those activities. <clears throat> the Prabhupada's purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, quoting from Vaishnav Toshini of Srila Sanatana Goswami, says that the incident of Krishna breaking the pot of yoga and being bound by Mother Yasoda took place on the Deepali day or Deepa Malika. Even today in India, this festival is generally celebrated very gorgeously in the month of Kartik by fireworks and lights, especially in Bombay. And it was understood that among all the cows of Nanda Maharaj, several of Mother Yasoda's cows ate only grass so flavorful that the grasses would automatically flavor the milk. Mother Yasoda wanted to collect the milk from these cows, make it into yogurt, and turn it into butter personally, since she thought this child, Krishna, was going to the houses of neighboring gopas and gopis to steal butter because he did not like the milk and yogurt to ordinary prepared. While churning the butter, Mother Yasoda was singing about the childhood activities of Krishna. It was formerly a custom that if one wanted to remember something constantly, he would transfer from it into poetry or have this done by a professional poet. It appears that Mother Yasoda did not want to forget Krishna's activities at any time. Therefore, she poeticized all of Krishna's childhood activities, such as killing. Putana, Agasura, Sakatasura, and Trinavarta. And while chanting the butter, she sang about these activities in poetical form. This is a person's ego to remain Krishna conscious 24 hours a day. 
This incident shows how Krishna conscious Mother Yasoda was. To stay in Krishna conscious, we should follow such mercy. Right there, right there. Vishabhanusutidevi Panchakalpa to the Daisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuna Pananda Sri Advaita Gada Har Sivasini Bhar Bhaktarindi Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So it gives a little insight on how devoted, a pure devotee is. When someone asked Srila Prabhupada, are you remembering Krishna? Prabhupada would say, there wasn't a time in my life that I can remember that I did not remember Krishna. <laughs> and here's an example of one who was fixed on Krishna. And Prabhupada very, very simply makes that point over and over again. Just remember Krishna. And here we see something very interesting. We see how uh, Mother Yudhoda was able to remember Krishna in such a sweet way, remembering Krishna's activities. She wrote songs or she prose songs about Krishna killing the different demons, Uttana, Agasura, Sakabasura, Trinabar. And while churning the butters, he sang these activities in poetical form. So here, as Prabhupada said, this is a recommended way by which we can remember Krishna 24 hours a day, turn it into a song, turn it into a poetry. Of course, we have the song, it's called the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and that's the easiest recommended and direct way to remember Krishna always. But then Krishna is not limited simply to his name. He has unlimited forms. He has unlimited pastimes. His qualities are also the, the same category, unlimited. So by remembering Krishna in different ways, we um, develop a more complete way of remembering Krishna. And that completeness is that it brings about the realization of Krishna's different qualities, activities, pastimes, and names and forms. So everything about Krishna is uh, sweet. It is uh, what we say uh, attractive <laughs> because Krishna's name is Krishna, and therefore he's all attractive. So uh, Maya Soda. She not only wants to remember Krishna in so many ways, she's thinking of how to serve Krishna in the best way. You can't understand why this boy, who has so many nice cows, and her, his, her husband, Nanda Maharaj, was an agriculturalist. 
He was a small king of his area, and he had 900,000 cows. And so in order to uh, divert Krishna's attention, going away to other places for looking for butter and milk products, uh, they made a plan to uh, find the best milk for Krishna. So they took the best thousand cows, and then they uh, milked those cows and took that milk and fed it to the best hundred cows, and took that milk fed it to the best 10 cows, and took that milk and then fed it to the best cow. And that cow, that milk was, uh, was Parma Ganda. Ganda means fragrance, and it's such a sweet. Here it says that the grasses were so flavorful that they would give automatic flavor to the milk. Nowadays, we buy milk in these stores, and it's just white water. That's probably all they do. And they don't even give you real milk. A lot of times, they take milk, they dry it out, they make powdered milk in it, and then they take the powdered milk, put it back in the bottles, and add some water, and they call it milk. <laughs> and so that's what you get a lot of times. Of course, that happens a lot in India. And in other places, too, the cows that give milk in other places around the world are cows that are fearful because they know that they're not going to live long. And so when they give their milk, it is not really secreting the, the nutrients that milk normally would have because of the fear that the cows experience. So a lot of times people say, well, milk is no good for you. Milk is the most miracle food. And it says, Prabhupada used to say, it's a miracle food for uh, babies and old men. <laughs> it provides all nutrition. And everything is there in milk. Milk gives uh, finer brain tissue. But then again, if we take milk produced by, uh, <clears throat> what we say, commercial dairies, we're getting real, not really milk, but something that is mixed with the uh, adrenaline of the fearful cow and a lot of times that causes people to get sick and that's why they think milk is not healthy because they kill cows therefore they get the reactions in the form of not getting the quality milk that cows normally give when they have nice calves and they're protected they know that they're not going to be killed they uh, go near their calves and then they give their milk to their calves the calves drink and they have much more left over and then the human beings can take it and have very nutritious food problems. And you can make over 200 different preparations simply from milk. <clears throat> One of the most nutritious food. So Krishna, he's a cowherd boy and he likes milk and he likes, well, he especially likes the results of milk and that is butter. And then so he uh, wants to go and uh, taste the butter of other places because he thinks this butter is even better than what I get at home. So Mother Yasoda and uh, Rohini, uh, the mother of Balaram, they were like two sisters managing two children. Um, uh, they were always concerned that Krishna and Balaram would get the best of the milk products. And so here is the program they did. And then uh, when Mother Yasoda would, would churn the uh, milk into, we say, first they would make yogurt. Uh, they take the milk and then they convert it into yogurt. And then from yogurt, they churn it into butter. And that butter is really white in color, very tasty, and very highly nutritious, mm -hmm. like that. And so, mm -hmm. That's what they wanted to give Krishna. Because they wanted Krishna to grow up healthy and strong. <laughs> Although he's God, he still needs some good, he needs some good food so he can be healthy his whole life. So that is the parental move of the devotees who worship the Lord in that mood of mother or father. They're very protective of Krishna. It's like the mood of deity worship. Deity worship is in the mood of parental affection. Uh, Krishna has to wake up. Krishna has to 
get dressed. This man has, first he has to get bathed, then he has to get dressed, then he has to get uh, nice food, and then he has to get sung to. And during the day, he takes rest, put into his bed, wakes up. Again, he's offered some nice food. And so the whole mood, and of course, later on, he goes to sleep and they put him. So that's what parents do to children. So when we worship the deity, we're really worshiping in the mood of Vatsayaras, the loving mood of taking care of the Krishna in the form of the deity, in the mood of, of giving the deity whatever it needs as a child or as a, as a person, food, clothing, bathing, rest, and singing to him nice songs to glorify his presence. <clears throat> Now, this mood is uh, very sweet. <laughs> Those who uh, do de develop deity worship regularly, who worship the deities regularly, they will not give it up for anything because it's such a sweet mood there. Uh, it becomes that Krishna has to have his food. He had Krishna has to have the best of all foods. Krishna has to be bathed with fragrant water mixed with camphor and various types of uh, or, uh, uh, fragrant oils. Everything is the best for Krishna. This Krishna is the best. The devotee always wants to offer everything nicely to Krishna and serve Krishna that way. And then when we go to the temple and see the deity on the altar, we offer Krishna our obeisances and we also pray to him, my dear Lord, you are so merciful. My dear Lord, you are so uh, amazing. You perform so many activities just to please your devotees. And the devotees pray the, to receive the mercy of the Lord. And what they really pray is, my dear Lord, please give me some service. I want to serve you. So the mood of bhakti is the mood of service. <clears throat> and everyone, the devotees are always thinking, how can I serve? Krishna, by serving Krishna, by serving his devotees, my spiritual master, <clears throat> by engaging in the activities of devotional service, which are offerings to Krishna. And so uh, Mother Yasoda, she's happily, <clears throat> and the ladies, they wouldn't have to worry about uh, getting exercise. They would be churning butter, Mother Yasoda's hips would be shaking. She had big hips. And her breasts would be bouncing. And then her, uh, she would have her uh, stick for churning. And she would have bangles, not plastic, <laughs> like we have now. Alpha said the ladies nowadays they all have plastic bangles. When years ago, they had gold, silver, various uh, jewelry connected to their to their uh, ornaments. So where is that now? We've become so advanced that now we have plastic <laughs> or paper. <laughs> but in the years ago, precious metals were available and people used them, especially the ladies, to decorate themselves very nicely. And Papa said ladies like to decorate themselves very nicely. It's a feature of feminine femininity. And therefore, they should have nice ornaments, nice bangles, nice jewelry, nice clothing, nice food. All of these are meant <laughs> to honor the woman class where they have everything nice and then they serve Krishna very nicely in that mood. Um, so, a devotee always wants to find ways to serve Krishna. And uh, we see here in the example of Mavya Soda, she's not only serving Krishna, she can't forget Krishna. She makes songs, or she has someone else making songs. They are called panegyrists. There's a particular word in Sanskrit called pen. I don't think, I don't know if it's in Sanskrit or not, but the word is panegyrist, where they can uh, take a particular topic and turn it into a poetic expression. They can take a particular situation 
and make it into a beautiful song. If you read Jaiva Dharma by Srila Jiva Goswami, you'll see there were two main panegyrists, uh, Marukanta and uh, Snigda Kanta. Both of them were brothers who were expert at glorifying Krishna through nice song, nice poetry, and very choicely chosen words. <clears throat> Sometimes we want to glorify with someone we say, oh, you're very nice. <laughs> but that's, that's, not, that's not a glorification because nice doesn't really tell you much. So many people are nice. But when you pick out something about that person and then you highlight that in a glorification mood, and then that's a nice way to honor another person. So, uh, and Krishna is a supreme honorable person. And therefore, devotees think, oh, let me write a song about Krishna. Let me make a poetry, a poem about Krishna. I made one poem about Lord Balaram. <clears throat> and it was really nice. Uh, devotees like it. I can recite it for you if you let me. Did I recite it? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sorry. Anybody else there? Yes, Guru yes, Maharaj. I was giving you thumbs up. Oh, okay. Ready? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Please. His name is Balarama. He's better than Obama. What to speak of Osama? He'll take all your kama and bring you to the holy dhamma. On the ultimate parikrama, Jai Balarama. Okay, that's a little poem, poetry I made up and reminds me of Balaram. <laughs> that was very nice, Maharaj. <laughs> Jai Balaram Ji, Jai. So you can also do that. You can find something about Krishna. In Krishna's relationship with his devotees, make a very nice poem. And uh, you have, and then you can actually, if you put so many poems together, you can actually make a poetry book. <laughs> there are devotees who do that. They write poems. And therefore, one of the one of the uh, 26 qualities of a Vaishnava is. Um, he's a poet uh, that's mentioned. That's one of the, I think it's the 24th or 25th quality of the Vaishnava that they become poets. <laughs> After a while, they take a different. Our Raj Prabhu is a poet, Guru Maharaj. Say again. Our Raj Prabhu is a wonderful poet. He writes poetry almost every few days and sends it to all of us. Really? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Very inspiring. He's a Kavi Raj. Huh? <laughs> well, Kavi Raj could mean poet and Kavi Raj mean, could mean uh, doctor too. <laughs> Two names for Kavi Raj. Two meanings. Well, that's nice. Yeah, this is part of Krishna consciousness is to transform language into some expression of devotion to Krishna. And there's many. I did one with the Srimad Bhagavatam also. Read the creed, get up to speed. That's the need. Take the lead. You'll be happy indeed. Jay. Nice. I like rhyming. I'm not so much good at poetry, but I, I fool around with rhyming. Okay. And these are usually preaching ways to get devotees to wake up to uh, preaching. But chant the holy name, you will never be the same. 
It's not about material things. That is not the winning game. It is about glorifying the Supreme Lord, who is non different than his name. You can do it with Ryan. Okay, so this is Mother Yasoda. She's teaching us how to remember Krishna. And she cannot forget Krishna. Krishna is a little child. A mother never forgets the child. Krishna is a little bit, he's about two or three years old in this particular, as he's already killed Putana, Agasura, Sakatasura, and Trinavarti. So, uh, it's interesting he rebuilt Agasura, but I think that doesn't fit into his age. I think that came later. Putana was Sakatasura, Putana. Putana was first, then Sakatasura, and then Srinivarta. Agasura came much later. Okay, so. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Thank you so much uh, for starting this month uh, with this talk, um, uh, with this um, chapter of 10th Canto. Thank you so much, Guru uh, You explain very well, and especially the poetry. <laughs> it's very nice, Guru to remember. Um, and also, yeah, we have to have an um, always take example from the scriptures and follow that it will be very easy for us to um, uh, to follow that and do it properly in a nice way good much thank you so much and this month krishna is easy to remember especially for yes. ladies with babies and every lady likes babies <laughs> they're a grandmother they think oh where's my grandchild i have to see him my mother used to chastise me Where's the grandkids? <laughs> I said, that's the job for my sister, not for me. <laughs> so, yeah, mothers, they want to relive their motherhood again because it never leaves them. And they, they have this motherly mood even when they're like a couple years old sometimes. It's there. It's kind of intrinsic in the, uh, the feminine nature to be motherly. It's more stronger than the fatherly nature. Yes, Karmaraj, yeah. So, dear devotees, uh, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, you can please go ahead. Shridevi Mataji? Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to this wonderful month of Damodar. I was in uh, Udupi recently and there in the temple, little Krishna is just about two or three years old, the little Murti, and every night they sing a lullaby. They... Um, I don't know how to say it. Anyway, the, in the local language, Jojo baby Krishna means go to sleep baby Krishna. So this song is sung every night to put little baby Krishna to sleep. And uh, then again, morning they wake him up also with another song. Sorry, huh? Mataji, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Guru Maharaj got disconnected. Um, oh. Yeah, um, I think he'll join again. Um, please pause, Mataji. <laughs> sorry. This internet is not uh, stable today. Yes, 
Krishna, 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Yes, Guru Maharaj is back. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, you are on mute, Guru Maharaj. We got cut off from Sri Devi when you just started to describe. Yes. Mataji, please uh, start again. If, if, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry about the gap. Um, yes, Guru Maharaj, I was in Udupi very recently, the Udupi Sri Krishna temple. There, they they treat baby they treat him a little baby Krishna. So in the night they sing a very beautiful Kannada song, Jojo Krishna. That means go to sleep, baby Krishna. So they put him to sleep like that with that song, and then they wake him up in the morning with different songs. So like this, the tradition, especially in South India, is to glorify Lord Krishna in the form of dance. It is a uh, pastime of uh, Yashoda tying up mother uh, baby Krishna is uh, very famous in Bharatnatyam. There are so many songs glorifying this pastime and uh, Bharatnatyam dancers are taught to uh, enact this pastime in the form of uh, dance. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, that's, that goes on Jagannath a lot. They have these uh, girls that dance Jagannath regularly. And they perform different pastimes in the mood of dance. You know, Vedic, Vedic culture is uh, glorification of the Lord in forms of dance, song, uh, architecture, poetry. Everything centers around Krishna. And that's what we want to bring into our life more and more to connect everything with, with Krishna. The material world works in such a way as they cut everything away from the Supreme Lord and give it to the material energy and say that if you know how to exploit the material energy in this particular way, then you can achieve something. But that is not Vedic culture, and that is not human culture. Human culture is connect everything with Krishna. Mm -hmm. The notes in English, in the Western, it's do re mi fa so la ti do. Da re ga ma fa da ni sa sa da ma fa da da yeah, you can go both ways. So that music actually descended from the, the uh, Ajurveda, I think it was the Yajurveda, not Yajurveda, but the, uh, the uh, Samaveda, Samaveda. So all that music comes from, um, from God, uh, architect comes from God, uh, everything comes from God. The Prabhupada's movement was to bring everything back to its original pure essence, and that's the Vedic culture. And that's a compromise our devotional life and by intervening with some kind of Western ideas that really centers around profit. From material society is centered around profit, where uh, Spiritual uh, society centers around glorification of the Lord.
Thank you for sharing that, Mataji. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, Revati Mataji, you have your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Sula Prabhupada. Um, thank you for the uh, very nice class. Uh, so, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about uh, worshipping deity. As uh, you have mentioned, like we have to worship the deity in a Vatsalya mode, uh, like how we take care of the child. So right now, like as a fight, we worship more in our awe and reverence. So how yeah. to develop that mood, uh, how to develop that uh, mood of... Uh... It's not contrary. You're performing the activities of Vatsalya service. But at the same time, you're worshiping in the mood of foreign reverence. So when you become mature in your spiritual development, in other words, when you actually develop love for the deity, then it is no longer foreign reverence. But that is the mood, because otherwise, if we don't, perform in the awe and reverence, we will get familiar. And if we are not on that platform, we'll commit offense. So the activities are in Vatsaya Ras, but the mood is Aishwarya Bhav. So activities in Vatsalya Ras Guru Maharaj, but the mood is Aishwarya. Aishwarya means you know, opulence. Okay. Or okay. okay. Mm -hmm. It's not that you chastise the deity or you, uh, if, he, if the deity doesn't listen to you, you don't feed him that day just to punish him. No, that's not the idea. Mm -hmm. To keep the mood of all the reverence. But when you just like, I mean, we had Bamsi Dari. Bamsi Dari was a great sadhu. He would carry his deities with him. And then he would take them and put them into the river and bathe them. And sometimes he would chastise them. Sometimes he would give them something to eat and they wouldn't eat. And then he would become like a stern father. So you can't, we can't imitate. Personalities like that because they're on pure devotional service. But we can come to that stage. If we, if we can't come to the stage, and what is the whole purpose of bhakti? But it's if we keep that mood of our reverence until we actually develop that mood of intimacy, which comes naturally. It can't be surreptitiously adopted, it comes natural. Oh, yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. So we have to always worship in mood of awe and reverence until we develop that natural love and pure bhakti. Yeah, it comes naturally if you're actually performing the activities in the right mood. Okay, Guru Maharaj, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, Guru Maharaj, thank you. This. I have just another question. Well, um, it's okay uh, if I ask. Have to, I, have to, I have to add something to that. You also okay. have to. You have to hear about Krishna. You have to hear about his transcendental passions. Yes, that's important. Sure. Thank you, Matthew. It's a very nice question. Um, Thank you, Guru Shai Krishna. Dear devotees, any more questions or comments or realizations you want to share? Um, Guru Maharaj, I, I just want to um, share my little realization um, where I, I, I'm just observing um, that uh, whenever I remember Krishna, that's it's in the throughout my daily activities, it's just like a just like for a second or two seconds like that but like again uh, my mind goes uh, into different thoughts and other things around so so i noticed that even in temple also temple it is little more spam because krishna 
so we see the beautiful uh, deities and uh, um, it's uh, more uh, in awe and reverence but uh, whenever i am at home the span is very short and it i get easily distracted uh, guru maharaj yeah. right. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And if you have good sadhana in the morning, you have nice rounds, it becomes more natural and easy to remember Krishna throughout the day. Sadhana sets the foundation for the rest of the day's activity. But if your sadhana is, is not strong or weak, very inattentive, it will be very hard, hard to remember Krishna throughout the day. Mm. Is Guru Maharaj that strong? It is where you put your attention on that morning sadhana. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Revati Mataji, you had one more question, right? I forgot. Um, uh, yes, Mataji. Uh, so just uh, Guru Maharaj just want to confirm like uh, in my altar, I don't have like um, Laddu Kopal. Uh, as you mentioned, we have to worship Krishna like a child in this month. Is it okay if I keep like uh, small? Uh... Laddu Gopal was never introduced into our society. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laddu Gopal was so we accept Lara Gopal because he's Christian. But you know, that wasn't a deity that Prabhupada gave us. He gave us Varnitai, Radha Krishna, Jagannath, Maladev, Subhadra, Sitaram, Mahatma, Hanuma. These are the main deities for worship. If you want to worship Lara Gopal, that's fine. And you can still worship Krishna in this deity form as Krishna. In that mood of, of taking care of him. That's what you're doing. You're taking care of him. He's agreed, and Prabhupada uses that word, he's agreed to, to put himself under the care of his devotion. Okay, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Yeah, so when I go to India, I'm planning to get uh, Gauranitai deities as you have advised me. So... This December, I'm planning to go to India so I can get the deities and uh, get the pictures. So, um, when are you going? Uh, December, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. Yeah. Coming to the, uh, to the retreat? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj. Actually, it's been uh, after COVID, it's uh, been three years. I didn't meet my parents, so just visit them and also visit ODP. Um, we have a, like a family wedding in ODP. So we're going to ODP also and we'll go to Iskon Temple over there. So that's things. Yeah. <laughs> nice, Mataji. Yeah, um, dear devotees, any more questions or comments? Yeah, Bhuvaneshwari Mataji, please go. Well, Hare, Krish- Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandvat, I mean, uh, all glories to you, Dandvat Pranam. Please accept my humble advances. Maharaj, I was um, a bit concerned about the you know, the cows being mistreated. And I was wondering whether we should actually drink milk because if it is not even beneficial for us anymore, then is it really beneficial for us to drink it? And if it isn't, then is plant-based any good? Well, where are you living? Manchester, Manchester. No, if I was living in London, then Manor has got a hint of milk, but I live in Manchester. Manchester, okay. You're not too far from uh, Leicester, right? Yeah, uh, well, it takes two and a half hours to get there. Well, then you have Sita Ram. He's developed a, a wonderful program of cow protection, uh, bhakti milk, and many other items also. It's a nice cheese. 
he's done his independent project and it's quite good. Mm -hmm. So that's near Leicester. Two and a half hours you can make you can go once a week, you can get all your milk products to a week and come back. Yeah. <laughs> well the thing is when we when we buy milk from commercial dairies, we're we're supporting the slaughter of cows. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Because the cow, the dairies give the cows to the slaughterhouses after the cows, they force the cows to and give as much milk as they can. And after five years, the cow is broken. It has no no life left in it. And so they just take it and send it to it. It's the most heinous and cruel activity in, in human society. And because of that, the whole world is suffering. People don't connect it, but the suffering of the world is really a lot of it is connected to cow training. Right. Okay. And if you can't, yes, sure. you know, make make your um, trip to uh, Leicester, is plant based any good? Plant based? Yeah. I don't understand exactly. You know, like they have got all sorts of milk, like almond milk and oat milk and coconut milk and God Not knows milk. what. It's, it's almonds. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> milk comes from. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Cows are Krishna's favorite animal. Yes. yes. Cows are Krishna's pets, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, my god sister, she's here in Mayapur. Vishwadika, she just completed a book called Bhakti Milk, in which she shows the horrors of plugging into commercial milk, and not even the Hemsen milk, because even these the Hemsen milk dog races, um, they wear the cows out too, and a lot of times when the cows get old, they, they sell them off. So, um, I, in the last six months, I've gone over to Bhakti milk. That means I only take milk coming from our cows, butter, cheese, any milk products. We also. So Bhakti Vedanta Manor is, has milk, it has ghee. Sita Ram's project has milk, it has cheese also. You can make nice ghee from the milk. Yeah. yeah, and it's nutritious and it's um, it's free from karma. We're actually getting karma when we take milk from these things, brother, or from these commercial dairies. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. it doesn't take time to become determined, and then Krishna will show you where you can get nice milk from. But Prabhupada wanted each of the temples and the society to have a farm connected with each city temple where we could supply the temple with all the needs, such as vegetables, grains, milk products. That was Prabhupada's vision for our society. Yeah, Thank so, you. So polluted, so with chemicals and pesticides. It's, it's, it's young. Can't get much it's, nutrition. Nutrients. Yeah. Prima Bhakti's there. He's also your friend from uh, Manchester. Uh, yes. He, he likes to serve the devotees. And yes. Give him, give him some money and he'll, he'll travel. Around his farm and buy enough milk products for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, Maraj, yeah, there, there is a distribution happening as well in in Leicester, where they can distribute to uh, temples as well. That program. Yeah, we need yeah. to do it around the whole world. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. Make the whole world. 
free from the slaughterhouse industry. Thank you, Marat. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Namrata Mataji, you want to go ahead? The Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I uh, wanted to ask, my question was about, uh, again, uh, the wor wor worshipping the Bal Gopal deities. Uh, if, uh, like, especially mentioning in the areas of Gujarat and Rajasthan, they are more used to worship uh, Bal Krishna deities from a uh, you know, long time. So like uh, many families, even who has uh, shifted uh, after the movement of Prabhupada came in, uh, many of the uh, uh, people shifted to um, uh, Gaudiya, uh, Sampradaya, um, Gaudiya, uh, Brahma Gaudiya Sampradaya, but still they have uh, the worship of uh, Bal Krishna deities along if they have Jagannath deities even still they have Bal Gopal deities if they have Gauranathaya deities so uh, how does, I mean uh, does the shift from um, you know Vatsalya mood to Madhurya mood that happens um, spontaneously or because uh, Bal Gopal worship is not there in our moment, right? So this well, just... Well, we worship uh, Krishna as Kishore. We are, we are devotees of Kishore Krishna. Krishna, when he was 11 years old, in his mood as, you know, the uh, dancer of the Rasadas. Mm -hmm. we, we worship Krishna when he's grown up. They worship him as baby, Bal Krishna, or as the Balava Sampradaya. Uh, that's nice. I mean, once a year, we actually go directly into the Bal Krishna mood with the Dhamadhar month. Because Krishna is sweet in all of his different manifestations. Yeah, so there's different, different uh, lineages of worshiping Krishna in different, uh, different types of worship. So Gaudiya is Kishore Krishna. Balda is Bal Krishna. Say Hadi Mahaprabhu had association with Balavacharyas. And he instructed him also. It's just a particular mood of worship. Right? Okay, Maharaj. So, is it fine if they if they are um, like Bal Krishna deities? The worship is like sometimes it's like uh, from generations they keep it, and if uh, the it, like. If they have shifted to the uh, to this moment in a you know say in a particular generation, so previously they have already you know uh, got into the mood. Uh, like if I say about myself, I have been seeing the Bal Krishna worship and the mood of that right from my childhood, and mm. um, and uh, worshiping uh, Gauranitai deities. I I am developing the mood, but the mood is very natural, which I have seen right from my childhood pro, uh, towards Bal Krishna deities. You so a, you have you have a Bal Krishna deity on your altar, right? 
Yes, Vinash. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so it is fine, Guru Maharaj. Does that uh, if if we are uh, worshiping in this moment, so uh, does that shift happen naturally, or is it okay? I mean, it can happen. No, it can. It doesn't necessarily happen naturally. See, the whole point is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is worshiping in the in the mood of Madhurya Ras, and we are followers of it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he taught the worship of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan. As Krishna is grown up, that is his contribution to bhakti. Yeah, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Anavyanya. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is our Marwara Acharya, the main Acharya. So we follow his mode of worship. But that doesn't mean you can't worship Baal Krishna, but you should also worship Krishna and Radha Krishna also. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hmm. Thank you, Mataji. Kalakanti Mataji, you raised your hand. Kalakanti Mataji, you're on mute, Mataji, if you are speaking. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. It's Aksam Mayam Bolivan, Sir, is a Krishna from God. Hi, I just have a question about uh, Japa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, uh, because I'm a very slow chanter, so at the moment for Kartik, I started like trying to get up very early, like at least between one to two hours, I will try. And uh, I was wondering, I want to do my rounds before Mangalati. So I was wondering, like, I don't know, like, I still can't, cannot finish even I'm getting up like one o'clock. And uh, I saw some devotees are chanting during morning program. So do you think it's like, I mean, during like Mangalarti and just to like finish their rounds, do you think it's a good thing to do? They chant, they chant during the Mangalarti? Yes, instead of attending the Mangalarti, they just take darshan and then they do. Well, if you're living in a temple, you must go to the morning program. Yes. And unless you have service at that time. That mm -hmm. is about the rule for all temple residents. If you're living in a temple, you must attend the morning program. If you're living outside, then that's different. <laughs> and you can make your schedule according. Okay. I mean, they are there in the temple, but they're just chanting their own. They're not attending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are in the temple, but they're not attending the round. They're just doing the job so that they can finish it early morning. Well, the temple authorities are not on top of it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you're living in the temple, you have to go to the morning program. <laughs> mm -hmm. used to live in the temple. If you don't want to go to the morning program, then move out. Mm -hmm. Outside the temple. Okay. It's, a bad, it's a bad example for others. Yeah, so get, yes. That's spreading around and nobody is like doing it. I think they can do it and make their own schedule. Morning program is meant for mm -hmm. them. I, mean, I, I like to attend the Program, but sometimes I'm getting a bit confused because I'm a slow chanter. So I say, shall I just like attend a bit and then chant so that I can finish before Mangalarti or at least before Japata, like getting ready? You finish before breakfast, that's nice. Before breakfast, let's finish it. Yeah, you have before Mangalarti, then you have your Japata in between, you have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I can do like, you know, in the moon in Japan, I can only do like eight rounds. So that's why it's a bit difficult for me. Well, are you hearing nicely? Or are you, if you're chanting slow, that's all right, but are you hearing good? Are you hearing it clear? Or is your mind wandering? Because if you go too slow, the mind will wander. Mm -hmm. One of the ways to stop the mind from wandering is to increase the speed of the japa. Okay. You have to see whether your mind is wandering here and there, and that you're chanting too slow. You're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. I take usually take at least 10 minutes to do one round. Hmm? I take at least 10 minutes. Uh, I, I can't understand you for some reason. I, see, I take at least 10 minutes to do one round. Uh, that's a little slow. I mean, my first two rounds, I usually take 10 to 11 minutes, my first two rounds, just to get connected to the holy name. But then as we continue, then the speed automatically should pick up. But to keep it at 10 through the whole time, it's a little slow. Sometimes I take 11 minutes for my first round, very slow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then as you continue to chat, you start hearing, and as you're hearing, and you should be able to increase your speed automatically. Um, also, Grimash, should we always chant with Shila Prabhupada? Uh, well, that, that's the best if you can do that. But if you can't, for whatever reason, don't chant any ashram. So. Well, if you're getting up at one o'clock, you have to in the ashram first because the temple's not even open that time. <laughs> yes, um, then I put Prabhupada. But in some temples, they, they put Prabhupada there, although they have Shila Prabhupada even in the, where they're chanting. But at the manner, we don't have it. We don't do that. When I was staying at Suva, we always used to have Shila Prabhupada in uh, Japan. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, Mataji. You should chant more, a little, little speed. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. You can go faster. Yes. Uh, they say if you're tired, you can chant more slowly. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have a friend like um, I introduced him to Krishna consciousness and he stopped chanting at midnight. I don't know like if that's a good he's, he said he attended a seminar, like one of your seminar. You said any time of the midnight, like you can chant. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're ready. Because you can, you can, I know, like most of us who give classes, we always say, we can always give a class no matter how tired we are. Giving classes is easy when you're awake or tired. But chatting, you can't be tired. It's just doing work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because before I thought it should always only be 
moving uh, Brahmamu road. And then when I heard it, so I was a bit confused about it. Before I thought it should only be during Brahmamu road time to start chanting, like between like two to... Uh, make yourself a schedule and follow it. Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. It was a yeah. nice question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any more questions or comments? I think we'll stop here. Yes, good Maharaj. Yeah, we are anyway past one hour. So thank you so much, Krishna. Yeah. We are wonderful association and nice question and session. Um, we look forward to your class tomorrow again. Thank you so much, Krishna. Thank you. Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, you were saying something. No, you were saying something uh, in the middle. Um, devotee is distracted. Yeah, I just Hare Krishna. <laughs> I thought I missed something, so <laughs> thank you. Good that, if you missed that, I'll say it again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vigoma. Thank you, Soras. Thank you, Krishna. 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 Thank you, Krishna.